Hey everyone and welcome to my OBS tutorial. This is my first ever tutorial I'm making for OBS Studio because a lot of people on my stream have been asking for or do a tutorial about this application that we use. If you're using Streamlabs OBS, I assure you that OBS Studios is a lot better. It's a lot more versatile and you can do a lot more with it. It's like Android, an app. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Today, we're going to go through the basics of OBS Studios. We're not going to dive in really hard on OBS Studio. So you as a beginner or as a new streamer, new content creator can just open up OBS, set up your scenes, set up your audio, put up some filters on the audios. We can add the game capture, adding the video capture. And this is only for a single PC setup because this is what I use. So let's just drop right into it. Hey, it's me, Josh. First of all, you got to download OBS studios from obsproject.com. I'll leave the link in the doobly-doo down below so you can go check that out. You download it for whatever uh, program you use or whatever software you have. I use Windows, so you download that. I'm not going to go through the whole downloading process and how to install it because I guess you guys already know that. So when you open OBS for the first time, it's going to show up like this. An auto configuration wizard is going to pop up. So the first thing that I do when I open OBS is go through this. You optimize for streaming recording secondary or if you're optimizing for or if you're recording just for YouTube and you do not stream at all, you optimize for recording and I will not be streaming and you you push one of these and you get to the other one where the video settings in base canvas that's a canvas of your screen that's the only thing you can use you can use a higher resolution that you don't have on your screen because then it's not going to work so use that press next fes blah 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 either that or that you can connect your twitch that's the great part that obs has integrated to the program so you can connect your twitch account so everything just goes direct to your stream or to your Twitch account or your YouTube account or whatever, so on. So you can use your, or you can connect it with your password and everything or use stream key. As you see, after you've gone through the auto configuration wizard, you're just going to put a, okay, set this up. So it's, it sets up for you because this is just going to be a base. We're going to tweak the settings afterwards to our own liking. So when we get into OBS, you're going to see the canvas here. This is where everything on the screen that you have on the screen is going to be recorded. So you have your scenes here down at the bottom on your left. You have your sources. The scenes are, as you might have guessed, different scenes for different things. You can put up your Ariel stream, just your cam and your chat or uh, your game screen, a little cam and your game in the background, right? All of this is on the scene. You make a scene for each thing you want to show on your stream. And the sources are different sources like your game, your video, your chat, your bot or whatever you need on your source. And you got your audio mixer here. My audio is not picking up because I'm recording on both <laughs> separate OBSs right now. So it's not working at the moment. You got your scene transitions that it goes from fade to move to everything. You can use your own stinger, your own custom one if you want. And from there on, you have your controllers and your start streaming and everything like that. So the first thing we're going to do after the auto configuration app that's going on here, we're going to go into settings. We're going to go into, first of all, video. Your base canvas is going to be 1920 to 1080 or the highest you have on your screen. You got to put that on here. The output resolution, since you're probably just a beginner streamer like me and not a partner, you can set it to 1280 720p or uh, as I like to do, because you can do your custom one and you can put 1664 times 964 i think that's it if i'm not completely bullshitting <laughs> right now you get a better resolution but it doesn't take too much of the resources of your computer and if it 
does take a lot of resources from your computer you put it down to 720p again and as i said the 1664 is not in obs so you gotta write it yourself you can just take this away write it yourself and you got it after that you use i use Langsus sharpen scaling 36 samples i think that looks smooth i feel like it it captures all the details in the game and everything that i want i also set my fps to 59 times 94 i don't know exactly why i do that but i just like it it's just stable and it's very good now we're going through the video settings of stuff and how your stream is gonna look or how it's gonna be sent out to your twitch and to your or youtube or whatever streaming platform you have so after we press apply here we go over to output and it's gonna be on simple after the auto configuration wizard so we're gonna go over to advanced and after advanced as you can see here we have your audio track i like to use me this is just me personally i like to use my audio track on five my twitch on six the twitch vod track is only for twitch users so your twitch audio is if you don't want to include your music on your twitch vod so you don't get dmca striked for secure reasons right and i just want to say that if you use copyrighted music stop doing it straight away it's gonna bite you in the ass in the future so don't use it find some non-copyrighted music that you like and use that on your stream it's better for you okay so let's move on to the encoder because right under here you have your x264 encoder that's your cpu encoder it's gonna be your cpu from your computer of course that's gonna encode and it's gonna send everything to twitch it's gonna Gonna process all your video all your audio everything gonna be sent through that but it's a not but but <laughs> it's a really good encoder but if you have an nvidia card that's uh, rdx 20 and upwards you can use the nvidia nvec h264 new and that's your video card that's your uh, gpu and so you can use your nvidia nvenc new not the ff mp egg not that one use the new one if you have an rtx 20 or upwards from that if it's downwards it's not gonna work really great in my opinion in my experience when i had it on gtx 1080 it didn't work that great so i have a uh, geforce rtx 3070 and it's working wonders it captures just perfectly perfectly stable so after that we're not gonna do use the rescale. We don't need that. We go into the rate control and we're gonna do constant bit rate. That's all you need to know, constant bit rate. And for the bit rate here, how much we're gonna use depends on how much your upload is. If your upload speeds is over uh, 10 uh, megabytes, you're good to go. If you have low upload speeds, lower your bit rate. It's the only thing I can do, but uh, I feel like everybody and most of the people have good internet. Well, now it's 2021. So as, as me, myself, when we get our wired internet, I have 500 up and 500 down. So uh, my bit rate, I don't usually crank it that much up. Uh, I usually have it around 6,000 or 8,000 and that's just to have uh, to have like more uh, room uh, for a, a better picture basically. So when you get that, the recommended uh, bit rate that Twitch allows is 6,000. So I guess for you, a new, a new beginner streamer, I would stick around 4,500 or just 5,000. The key frame interval, we put that to two. Preset quality, this is how good it's going to look on your stream how good it's going to perform so if you have a really uh, a good uh, graphics card or a good uh, gpu and you're not skipping frames or anything use max quality if you're skipping frames or anything lower it to quality or performance just keep lowering it until you hit that sweet spot put on look ahead and uh, psycho visual tuning enables dynamic b frames if disabled the encoder will always use the number of b frames specified in the max b frame settings if enabled it will increase visual quality by 
by only using however many B frames are necessary up to the max at cost increased GPU utilization. All right. And Psycho Tuner enables encoder settings that optimize the use of bitrate for increased perceived visual quality, especially in situations with high motion at the costs of increased GPU utilization. Okay. So just keep these things on. Uh, I use them. I had have no problems i i usually play a lot of fps games and high motion games and my stream has been looking utterly smooth lately after all of this just recommend to keep these on gpu just keep it to zero because we only have one gpu in our computer i don't think you have more i i usually don't think that uh, a lot of people have several gpus in their computer and as i said in the early moment of this video this is for a single stream pc so i don't think you need that single pc streaming is the future in my opinion and the new gpus that are coming out are insanely good so you don't need more you don't need to buy two computers to actually stream at a good quality after we're done here we're done with the stream output we can go to recordings if you want to see how i do my recordings i just use the stream encoder because now we're recording now we're not streaming right so everything is the same as always as the streaming but you do the rate control a constant bit rate and i use my bit rate for the recording at eighteen thousand. so you want as much data to be in your recording so you don't lose anything right and you just keep everything as the stream uh, encoder was i also rescale my output under recording so it's 1920 uh, times 1080 so you get that full hd for your recording also very important you want your audio tracks to be on you want one two three four five i use five that's just my thing because you want to split your audio when you get when you're doing your recording so you can turn off or turn on for example your your music that you had in the background you want to delete that you take that for example you have your mic on audio track one the discord on audio track two music on audio track three and your gameplay on audio track four so if you want to take away that you have that when you drag over your video to your editing software so you just delete that and boom your music is gone it's very nice also use the recording format MK mkv and after you record it, this is just a, a, a quick, quick recording. Do your recording path, right? You have your recording path and everything ready. Click or play. When you want your recording to be an MP4 file instead, you go to Remix Recordings. You see this option right here. You press this, you get into videos and you find your video. For example, I have my OBS recordings here right and for example this and you remix it and boom it's an mp4 file now and you can use it on whatever editing software you want now we got the output this is a very important thing uh, for the audio because twitch has now increased the audio bitrate to 320 so you want everything to go up to 320 just put up every twa twack <laughs> am i my bugs bunny what the fuck <laughs> just put on every track to tw uh, 320 and it's gonna be fantastic you're not gonna get that jittering or that lag or uh, that spikes from your audio if your audio is not peaking from before of course we're gonna go through that in a little bit so we are gone through nvenc we gone through the encoder we gone through the video settings we gone through uh optimizing the wizard tool you can always do that later on the optimizing wizard tool by the way you can press it here and you can do it again after this we're adding the audio so when you add the audio you can do it two ways you can add a source right here add input capture add an input capture and you get your audio right here default or your chat mic that's your chat mic and now you can see it's capturing my mic right in your desktop audio here, here you have it or let's delete this because we have that you can go in here audio and here we go mic 
you want your mic to be chat mic and this is for the go xlr you choose whatever mic you have if it's a usb mic you choose that one if you're using audio interface like a focus right or something like that you choose that one i'm using a go xlr so i'm gonna choose my i have it through my sample so i'm choosing that and the desktop audio is just system so apply now you see that it's picking up my mic audio and that's how you set up your mic and you can set up whatever you want if you're gonna split your audio from um let's say discord from your desktop audio you need a virtual mixer or you need an actual mixer either a thing called voice meter banana i'm gonna put a link to it in the description down below or you can buy a go xlr a go xlr is much easier voice meter banana is a bit bleh, to the naked eye it took me a while to understand that myself but i got through it <laughs> in the end so as you see now and the audio is picking up from my mic i don't know if i have uh, any desktop audio i'm not gonna check that but i uh, when you do that through here you can do that also uh we're gonna add let's go from the audio section the scene section so we have our scene here you can rename it if you want let's rename it irl you add if we're gonna do a just talking head video, you add a video capture device. My video capture device is not gonna pop up right now because it's not working because I'm recording my face at the moment. Under this device, you choose whatever device you're using. If you're using a cam link, you press that. If you're using a webcam, you search for the webcam name, you press that and it's gonna pop up. So I'm using the uh, cam link. It's not gonna pop up because I'm recording as i said uh, on another program but let's say it's open you choose that you can add your browser if you're using like let's say i'm using stream elements um, i use everything through a browser so you go in here you write chat for example chat slash url you copy paste your stream elements link and you paste it here in 1920 1080 depends on what's what scale you have and you press OK and it's going to be open and it's going to open. It's going to open everything you have. And if we're going to choose. So if you want to add a new scene, because you're now using just one scene, you're adding a new scene, a game scene, for example. Here, we're going to have a video capture device. We're going to do that. And when you already have a video capture device, I'm going to show you right now in one of the scenes like this one. Let's use that one so we can actually see what I'm talking about. We have this webcam, okay? And you go into your game scene and you're gonna add a new one, but you don't need to add a new one. You can just add your existing and boom, there you have it. And you can scale it up and down. And as we all like to do, we like to like crop the sides to make it fit inside a camera border. You can uh, crop it by holding down Alt and crop it from the sides or here or whatever how you want it use alt and you're gonna see a green line when you're cropping it so you can scale it up and down and we're gonna add let's say we, we want to capture a game you go in and you right click or you press the plus sign whatever you want what feels natural to you and you press the game capture let's say we're we're just gonna call it game capture in here capture specific window and i open little nightmares in the background it's not going to pop up because you have it minimized but when you open it again it's going to open right here and now you can't see your cam that's because your cam is underneath so if you want your cam to be over you're just going to drag it over as you see here that i'm doing and you can place it wherever you want and you can crop it you can scale the game also if you have an overlay that's uh you have your chat here for example and you have your overlay here and you just want to have a little bit of it you can do that after you this is the game scene and you can also if you're just going to react to stuff right i'm doing some reacting streams or whatever you can open your main capture or your main display right so you can get here open display capture device and let's just call this main and boom now we're in its inception 
Now it's capturing everything on the screen. So if I move this now, it's going to capture my desktop, right? Now it's capturing my desktop. And yes, I watch a lot of anime. I watched everything from One Piece and it's still going on. I'm going to die before it's done. Everybody knows it. So you got your main capture device or main display device. You can choose whatever display you want here. If you want this one, I was capturing there. And if you want this one, you just choose whatever. Hello. Now you can see me again. Well, well, well. So that's the main thing. Also, one thing that I've learned is that you can actually set the colors to whatever you want. So you can set the main. You can set colors to whatever you want on your sources and not on your scenes. Apparently, I didn't know that. I am so sorry. <laughs> so let's continue. After you set up your cam, your game capture or your display capture, because I had some people ask me how to do the audio, how to make it not clip and the filtering and everything like that. So I'm going to show you right now how I do it. Also one neat little tweak that I like to do on my stuff is right click right here and have it vertical because I like how it looks. It looks like a mixer. I just love that. I just love that it's this way instead of this way because this takes a lot of space for some reason. So I use vertical layout and when you want to add your mic or you want to add some specific stuff to your liking, you press the cogwheel on your audio source here you go into filters plus and here you have all the filters that are in integrated with obs from before the one that i like to use on my obs is a limiter and we're just calling it limiter and the limit is how high your mic is gonna go before it stops right so you can get as loud as you want but it's not going to peak. So keep your limiter at, I like to keep it at 11 because then it's right under, wait, at 10, I mean, because then it's right under the red part. Because as you see here, we're going to turn this around again. As you see here, my mic is going up and down and you want your mic, your voice to be in the yellow orange area and not peaking up to the red one. Because when it's peaking up to the red one, you get this crackling sounds or you get this distorted audio that nobody wants to listen to. If you're not listening to metal at the same time, it's gonna it's gonna sound terrible. If you're doing some effects at some point in your stream, it might sound cool. So you got your limiter. That is the last thing on your list that you need. You get your compressor. Your compressor is the one that makes your loudest voice and your lowest voice. And you guessed it, it compresses it. So you sound almost alike all the way. I personally don't like this compressor right here. But if we're going to do a real quick rundown of the compressor, you need to listen to yourself on your headset. That's first of all. And you take the ratio, you take this down to 4-1. That's a really good standard setting for a compression. You can leave the attack and the release as it is. And you listen to yourself. You can start from zero. And while you listen to your headset, uh, I could show you how you do that first. You go in here advanced properties and you find your mic and you press on monitor only let's just keep that on because now you can hear yourself in your headset so while you're doing this while you're talking talking to the headset you turn this down and while you're getting turned down at the point you you hear your voice is getting turned down you stop and you turn it down like 10 decibel more or five and then because now your voice has gone down right so you want let's say it's down here to 30 and you want you still want your mic to go up so you take it up a notch kick it up like eight decibels or until you're in the yellow part of the audio and that's it 
and that's a really good like standard compression and now you're compressing it should be really nice you can talk like this you can talk very it's gonna be right there or you can talk really loud and it's still gonna be in the middle of the thing with the compressor and the limiter you can't go wrong it's a very easy setup this is a standard setup this is not how i use it because i use everything through my go xlr and i think that's really great the compression and limiter is a must if you're not using any go xlr or external filters to your mics or anything so just use that a good thing that you need to is a noise suppression use the newest noise suppression because now you don't hear the you can hear it but you don't hear it that much and you can you can probably not hear the fans and you can probably not hear anything that is going around or maybe some knocking at door or something like that it doesn't cut out everything but it helps cutting out like the noise suppression can cut out your clickety clack from your keyboard <laughs> and uh, it can do wonders for your audio as we're going through the audio section right now you can also download your own plugins if you know what that is you can go to uh, re plugins and you can download some eqs some compressions and use your own one and if you want to use your own plugins you press here the vs2x plugin okay and you select whatever plugin you want here are my plugins these are only guitar effects and drums and everything that i use for my music productions i'm not going to show you that right now or i can show it if you press one of these you open plugin and it opens right here but we don't want that right now so we got the plugins down and the audio down the uh, one of the important things that you need to know here it's let's say this is your desktop audio right this is everything that goes goes through your computer you want if you're recording and if you want to uh, let's say split your audio in your recording you take away all of this because you don't need the audio from your camera right so your desktop audio let's say your desktop audio is number four so take a uh, take away one two three four and keep four five six because th as i told you earlier this uh, the audio and the audio track that you have here on your output is everything the stream hears so you want your audio number four and number five and number six to be on because everything here is going through that number audio track number five so you want that to be there and like this so now your mic or your desktop audio is not in your mic channel when you do your recordings if you understand what i mean if you wanted to edit your audio or eq your mic system audio or your desktop audio is still in your in your mic track it's gonna be a terrible time <laughs> to edit your mic sound or anything at all if you would probably if you um game sound is super loud but your mic is low but you can post edit it and they're on the same track it's gonna be a nightmare to do that but if you separate it as you do here you get one track with only your mic and one track with only your desktop or game audio and you can do this with everything you want all the audios you want your discord the people that's talking to you you can uh, let's say the cam one is discord right you put that on two and you have five and six already inside right and you have let's say it's let's say the vod audio soundtrack is your music you get this one right here and boom boom now your music your discord is going through your audio but also as i said earlier if you want to split this you need the voice meter banana or you need a go xlr and uh, you have a plugin that is new I, I i will see if i find it but that gives you a virtual mixer for obs yeah, i'll link it in the w as well we've gone through the audios we've gone through the plugins we've gone through video settings we've gone through how to add your scenes your sources your settings on obs and everything one more thing that i want to show you that fixed a lot of lagging problems for me is that when you open obs you go in you tag obs you go in here open file go into properties 
compatibility and you press this button right here run this program as an administrator apply it okay you open that as administrator and that fixed so many things all the lagging gone in my experience it's been gone it fixed so many issues so if you don't have your obs open as administrator i highly recommend you do that and you start using that from now on one more thing i got for you guys the be right back screen if you want to add a be right back screen you just add your scene you call it be right back scene if you already have a video that you like of media source or just a picture or whatever that you want to show while you're gone you add a media source you go here add a media source let's call it be right back let's find our media source i have mine right here and you put it on loop you always put it on loop or else it's gonna just go away and press ok and it's open i like to use this as my be right back screen and you add your browser source with your chat or uh, your goals or anything and you have your chat up here or here wherever you want it wherever you like it's very simple and that's how i create my be right back screen and it loops forever until you come back uh one more thing that i would like you all to know on your view here you have your dock you go down here press the stats one now you add this to one of your your docs wherever you want on your obs wherever you can see it because now it shows you how much space you have left on your computer if you're missing frames if you skip frames if you've done anything that's wrong with obs at that moment so you can see whatever cam maybe you can fix it straight away through that and we're just looking at it and uh sometimes the the render line like spikes here and there when you open the game don't be afraid of that it's just your computer opening the game so it spikes right there and then i hope you enjoy this video but i got some quick and not advanced settings for you or advanced tips for you but if you want you can always go in here to your settings to your general you can choose whatever theme you want you can choose the dark one you can choose the acre one or the roshni one or the most terrible one the system one if you use this i don't know i don't think we can be friends <laughs> I use the rush new one because it's really nice it, it looks really good i love it one last thing if you don't have a stream deck you have your num keys i don't have my num keys because i have a small ass keyboard a 65 percent keyboard i think it's called um you can absolutely use your num lock keys because you can go in here to your hotkeys and you can let's say we want to switch to this scene right here press one and we switch to a real scene afterwards right you apply this okay now we press two and it opens the real scene and you can add whatever hotkey you want whatever functions for you you can op show your cam switch to scene mute your audio and everything and you can use all the hotkeys you want you can do control plus one or control alt one or whatever this has been my obs studio tutorial for beginners i hope you like it and i hope it wasn't too confusing for the next video if you want me to do a stream elements uh, rundown how i set up everything on stream elements the bot the overlays the chat bots or anything like that timers and stuff leave it in the comments down below I love you all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.